Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Worship your name, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, hey, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Come on, just tell him. Thank you. Thank you. You've been good to me, yes. Been good to me. To me, Lord, you've been good. Ha. Thank you. Ha. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Lord, for all you've done for me. Thank you. <laughs> hey, thank you. Thank you. Come on, tell him. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Lord, thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for all you. hallelujah God we bless you this morning God we praise you this morning God we magnify you this morning come on in the room Lord and have your way come on in the room Lord have your way oh God oh yes glory to your name Jesus glory to his name. Worthy, Come on, everybody say glory to his name. Precious name. Come on, give glory to his name. Precious name. was the blood applied so we give glory we to come on give him glory when we sing glory Was the blood, the blood applied, and we give glory. Let's go back to Calvary. Down at the cross, come on and say, Down at the cross, where my Savior died. Down where from cleansing, but where from cleansing. From sin, sin I cried. It was there to my heart. Yes, was the blood, the blood of life. And we give glory. Oh, we give glory. Read to his name. Precious name, sing a choir, sing glory to my Savior. <laughs> Death to my heart, the blood of life, and 
and we give glory. Give glory to his name, precious. Come on, church, because we give glory. Yes, sir. My Savior. He was there to my heart. Was the blood. We sing glory. Lord's Spirit is here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. This is the day that the Lord hath made. Yes, it is. We will rejoice and be glad in it. I don't know about you, but I was glad when they said unto me, Yes, Lord. Let us go into the house of the Lord. Yes, it Lord. is nothing but the Lord's grace and mercy yes, that afforded us the opportunity to be here on this morning. Yes, there are a lot of places we could have been, yes. but by grace and mercy we are here, and yes, so let us make a joyful noise yes. to the Lord. Yes. Yes. All ye lands, come in. Yes. Hallelujah. God's people. And the sheep of the Lord's pastor. Yes, yes. Therefore, therefore. You know, the word therefore means because of these things, right. we enter into his gates with thanksgiving. Hallelujah. Thank and into God. his courts with praise. We are thankful unto Thank the Lord. You, and we bless his name. Yes. Why? Because, it's good. because the Lord is the Lord good. Is yes, he is. Yes, Can he you is. think of anything and anyone else that's any better than the Lord? Hallelujah. Oh, the Lord is good. Yes. 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 Truth Ooh, I know that's right. endures to all generations, and if for nothing else, mm. they ought to put a praise on your lips. Hallelujah. Mm. Hallelujah. It ought to make you put your sanctified yes. hands together. Mm. It ought to make you wave them in the air yes. and say deep down in your soul, yes. if it had not been for the Lord, who was on our side, yes. where would we be? Thank God is good. Yes, he yes, is. He is. And God is worthy yes. of all the praise and all the glory. And so for that reason, we know the Lord is already here, don't we, y'all? Because yes. his word says where two or three are gathered together in his name, he's there in the midst. So we know the Lord is already here. But how many of you just need the Lord to touch you this morning? Yes. 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 How many of you this morning just need the Lord to manifest yes. 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 You came in here with some stuff that you knew weren't too much for God. But it was kind of troubling you, kind of bothering you. Yes. And you just want the Lord to speak a word. Yes. Yes. You want the Lord to bust the move. That's right. <laughs> and let Ooh, you I know, love, I'm here with you in the midst of Amen. this. Amen. Amen. And even if God don't fix it today, mm. we know God is well able. Yes, yes. And so let us invoke the Lord's presence into this place. Gracious and eternal God. Yes, God. Oh, how we love you. Yes. Oh, how we praise you. Yes. Oh, how we magnify and exalt your holy name. There is none like you in all the earth. Marvelous in all of your ways. Perfect in all of your doings. Even when we don't understand it, we still have to give you glory, honor, and praise. Just because of who you are. Yes, God. Here we are this morning. We come with no other agenda but to lift you up. We come with no other agenda but to magnify you. Jesus. Your name is great in the earth. Yes, Lord. You are loving and kind, Savior. Yes, <laughs> You're marvelous, God. Mm. You're great. And we invite your presence in here this morning. Rest on us, God. Mm. Let us feel your presence like a warm blanket. Wrap us up, oh God. Give us a case of what the senior saints used to call the can't help it. Yes. But when we would hold back our praise, mm. because of the things that are surrounding us, we find ourselves compelled to give you glory. Yes. Compelled to worship you. Yes, Lord. Compelled to lift our hands. Yes, Lord. Yes, sir. To yes, lift sir. our voices in praise to you. You're welcome into this place. Have your way. Welcome to this place, to this place, welcome Lord, welcome to this broken vessel, to this broken vessel, you desire, you desire. 
I'm not sure what that page number is. 508. 508? 508. Yes. 508 in the hymnals. It should be on the screens as well. It's an old favorite yes. of the church. If we don't know nothing else, we know this is my story. Yes. This is my song. Praising my Savior. Come on, Pastor. All the day long. Come and on, God. So, since we're here this morning, y'all, now if you wanted to rest and relax and muddle over whatever you got going on with you, Perhaps this is not the place you should have come. <laughs> but since you took the time to put on your good stuff, mm -hmm. calm down your hat, mm -hmm. push your way to get here, Amen. you might as well give God the glory, honor, yeah. and praise while you're here. Yeah. Knowing that while we're in this space, whatever that was out there, we can't do a thing about it. Amen. But we come in here to worship the one that can do something yes, about it. So while we're here, we might as well give him glory, honor, amen. and praise. Amen. Have I got problems? Oh, yeah, but I got a great big God that's well able to have a bit. And I stand on what his word says, and I rest in the words of this hymn that say, Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a fortune. Yes. Glory to God. Yes. I'm an heir of salvation. I've been purchased by God. Yes. I've been born of his spirit and I've been washed in his blood. Y'all, every now and again, you need to get your hymn book. Mm -hmm. Not because you can sing, but because you just need to go through there yes. and read some of those words. Yes. Let them sink down in your sha -na, na When they get down in your sha -na, na even when you can't sing, you'll sing in the key of G. X, Y, and Z. Oh, but you'll God. give God the glory Amen. for what the Lord has done Amen. in your life. And so now we form one big choir. Amen. Yes. Lift our voices to say, Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Blessed assurance. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine.
story. This is my song. Thank you, Lord. Praising my Savior. Amen. Not part today, but all the day long. Amen. Amen. We now have announcements by Deacon Gloria Howard. Good morning. Good morning. And that's my story all the day long, just praising him as much as we can. That's our story. And we want to tell everybody that we are praising the Lord all our days. Yes. Again, on behalf of Pastor Azell, the members and leaders here at Greenleaf, we just welcome everyone out to our services on this morning, including our online members. And we also thank those who worship us by live stream each and every Sunday. We just count it a blessing that uh, those have decided to worship with us. And then now we want to go into our April birthdays. If we have any members that have birthdays this month, we do ask you to stand while uh, Elder Bell and uh, the other young lady, I forgot her name, but I'm going to get it. <laughs> Bless the Lord. <laughs> well, we got one that popped up. We'll have our birthday song. Two. Three. Come on, y'all. Happy, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. 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 And many, many more. And those members celebrating anniversaries this month are Brother Terry and Sister Jackie Cobb, Brother Stanley and Sister Marilyn Quinn, Brother Cornelius and Sister Simone Kemp, and Sister Ola, mm -hmm. it's you all's anniversary, and Sister <laughs> <laughs> <Deep> Ola. <laughs> Bless the Lord, bless the Lord. Amen. We're sorry we don't have you down, but we'll have you next week. Amen. But we just ask God's blessings upon each of you Amen. and just pray that this Amen. month will be a blessed and a new month amen. for some new celebrations. Amen, amen. and amen. Lord. Remember that there is no Bible study for the remainder of April. Bible study will resume on May 1st at 7 p.m. and we will be studying John the 13th chapter. Revival, revival, revival. Revival time is a time of re to refresh, revive, and renew. And a special thank you to Pastor Lisa Milner Little for starting our revival. I mean, if you were not here, you really missed a good service on um, last Wednesday. Uh, her topic was, God's vehicle of choice is the storm. Yes. Yes. And her scripture reference was Luke 8, verses 22 through 26. So if you have to speak to the storm and not ride on it, you just got to speak to it. If you want to know a little more about that uh, topic, I'm not going to say ask your mama, but go on our live stream and just listen to that service. Uh, and what she imparted to us yes, on last yes, Wednesday. And then join us virtually and face-to-face -face this coming Wednesday evening at from 7 to 8.30 p.m. Our preacher this Wednesday is Apostle Leroy Hargett of Life Changes Church in Clayton, North Carolina. And then on the next Wednesday, April 24th, we will end our revival for the month. 
If we ever need to pray, we need to do it now. And prayer is always appropriate, so let's press in and pray through. Each Monday, unless otherwise announced, we gather here at the altar for corporate prayer at 12 noon. And anyone is welcome to come out and join us. And if you do, I know you will be blessed. The Wall of First Banquet, honoring seven barrier-breaking women in our community who are first, will be held on April 27th at 6 p.m. This is a fundraiser for Rebuilding Broken Places. Tickets are now available at $50 per person. The guest speaker is Virginia K. Solomon, president and CEO of Common Cause and the former lead of the Women's, the Women's League of Voters. So let's make this a sellout event. If you haven't already gotten your tickets, I think we have another week and a half that we can purchase tickets so please let's support this fundraiser for Rebuilding Broken Places and support those first, those women that are first in our community. The media ministry will meet on Thursday, this coming Thursday, April 18th at 6 p.m. And we are honoring our security, ushers, and greeters this morning. Yes. Not everyone can be an usher, a greeter, or provide security. We are grateful for those who see this as their call to service and have embraced this necessary work. You are the first impression of Greenleaf and are the ones that settle whether what we say aligns with how we act. And when we say we are Greenleaf Christian Church and we are determined to show you the love of God, and we thank all of those ministries for their services. And as you can see, we are doing some facelift work here at the church. If you have personal items stored here at the church, another reminder to please come pick up and remove your stuff. We will, uh, the church will be open for this, um, for the next two weeks. Mondays, Wednesday, or Friday from 10 a.m. through 1.30 p.m., again, through the end of the month. And the items left after the end of, the, of April will be repurposed. Amen and amen. Come get your stuff. Uh, April is National Artism Acceptance Month, and it's also National Child Abuse Prevention Month. We will have some uh, literature and information on the bulletin board in the fellowship hall, so we ask that you do go back and check it out. And as I close for this morning, our thought of the week, take this with you. Let God's promises shine on your problems. Thank the Lord. Amen. How many of y'all know God is? Amen. Yes, hallelujah. Yes. Amen. Yes. He's everything we need him to be. Just like he commanded Moses to lead the people of Israel. He said, I am. Tell them I am. Amen. So that means God is whatever you need him to be. Amen. He's been a whole lot for me. Amen.
God is, yes, He is. He's my all and all. God. God is Ooh, my all and all God is
Thank you, Lord. Hey, hey. Come on, Pastor. Misery and strife. Yes. What did he promise? He yes. promised to keep. Yes. Never. Yes. He's never able to come short of his word.
a stone. Yes, yes sir. Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Amen. Amen. Look at Amen. the word in my face. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. My God. Yes, sir. I'm telling you, I came in here this morning, I was tired. I told uh, Sister Ruby, I said, I'm broke down to the least common denominator. (laughs) I'm just tired. Got on a plane because God presented the opportunity. Y'all can sit down. He presented the opportunity for me to be able to go and share in the homegoing celebration of Mother Lucille Manning. And and I'm telling you, once getting there, it was confirmation for the work that I did for my doctoral studies. She was a mother indeed. And they celebrated her like a mother indeed. The people turned out. It won't no having to pull no teeth when people were talking about who she was and what she had done in the community. But I'm telling you to get there, there was a storm. I thought about Deacon Black. Savior Jesus, let me tell y'all here today. That was the roughest plane ride I have ever had. It was rougher than New York. We were, we left from RDU to go to Charlotte And that's supposed to be a short flight. The turbulence was absolutely horrible. At one time I was was getting nauseated. And I said, what in the world? And then people started throwing up from the turbulence. And right when we were about to land, Deacon Black, they shut down the runways so that the plane could not go down. So the pilot had to do this. And back up we went. And he came on, he said, don't y'all worry. (laughs) Really? (laughs) He said, because uh, we've got to circle around a few more times, but everything will be all right because we got fuel. I closed my eyes and folded my hands across my chest. (laughs) And I said, everything gonna be all right because God is on board. God is on board. I said, Lord, I know you got this. And I can't stand too much more to see up and in and down in it. And I can't do nothing about it, but Lord take care of us. Yes. And God did. We got our connection from Charlotte to, we missed our connection to Charlotte because of the weather. And then we got our connection from there. Could not go into Indiana, we had to go to Cincinnati. And then get a car ride from there to Indiana. So what should have landed me in Indiana at around 8.30 or so actually landed me in Indiana at 1 o'clock Saturday morning. But guess what? I was all right with it because I got there all right. And I told the Lord, thank you that I made it there all in one piece. Coming back was not as turbulent, but we were late about 12 o'clock or so getting home. But I got home. And I was able to get here this morning. Tied, broke down to the least common denominator. But when I think about God being and all that the Lord has been to me, I can't help but rejoice, which leads me into my next thing. Greenleaf, you all may get sick of me saying it, but I have to say it because my heart over, over is overwhelmed. It swells with it. I appreciate you all, and I love you so much. Thank you. On this past Monday, I came out here to the church uh, and set up for my defense, for my doctoral studies. And I was able to successfully defend. Amen, amen, amen. It has been a journey. But God, God is so faithful. Yes, he is. I think think back to when Bishop came as pastor and one of our first meetings with him. And he was asking about, I'm sure Joe, um, Reverend Joe probably remembers this. He was asking about what our calls were and 
what we thought, what ministry we felt that God was leading us to. And I said to him, well, I, I ain't even sure I'm going to stay here. <laughs> he said, oh, it'll be all right. It'll be all right. Uh-huh. We're going to see. We're going to see. And then he got talking about school. I said, school is an absolute no. I'm not going to school because I don't think that's necessary for my life. <laughs> not only did I go to school, I went to school, I went to school, I went to school. <laughs> I don't want no more school, y'all. Help me pray there ain't no more school. I hope this is it for me. But if it's not, I know God is, suffi is sufficient to take care of me through all of that. And you know, the adversary, I I'm saying all of this to encourage you. It is never too late to pursue and to overtake those things that somebody told you was not possible. Age is not the thing that keeps you from it. But even as you are going, look, be aware of the snakes that try to come out and bite you along the way. <clears throat> they come in all shapes, sizes, positions. After all of that on Monday and rejoicing, I go to the orthopedist for my end of the, my one year checkup from my knee replacement. My orthopedist comes in and he, you know, he asks y'all the questions. How is, is it stiff? Now, yes, it is. It does get stiff. Um, can you tell it when the weather's coming? Show sure can. He says, um, well, is it like pain? I said, no, it's stiffness, but I think it's more than what it would have been because I've been doing a lot of sitting and reading and typing and that kind of thing. Well, why are you sitting and reading and typing so much? Because I was finishing up my doctoral work, and this is what he did. Looked at my record. He said, you 68 years old. Why would you go back and get a doctor? <laughs> what you going to do with it? Oh, Jesus. I like to wet Genesis through Revelations on him. <laughs> Because the Lord said so. Because the Father, the King said I could come. The King said I could do it. It might not be required for you, but you know what? We as people of color, it would never be a question asked of people of privilege. But of the, those of us of color, why so late? Why you want to do this now? Because God enabled me to be able to do it. And just like he said to Peter in the 21st chapter of St. John, whenever he was telling Peter what kind of death he was going to die, Peter looked over there at John and said, what's going to happen to him? He said, what is it to you if he stay here till I come back? What is it to that doctor? And anybody else for that matter, if I go back to school again and get, I ain't going to do it, but go back to school again and get a PhD. If you're going to be living, you might as well do something with your life. And maybe some little young black girl, little black boy, will look at me and say, Lord, if grandma can do it, anybody can do it. The Lord will make a way, y'all, somehow. And so to you, I say, I say to each of you, thank you so much for everybody who prayed, everybody who bought me something to eat, even, you know, not, not always the healthy things like good old popcorn that I love, but... Candy bars, Lord Jesus, I'm telling you, I had some good stuff sunk to my way. I thank you all. I thank you all. I could not have made it without you. Your encouragement, your, your patience, your grace toward me along this journey. It has been a marvelous ride. Graduation will be May the 10th and the 11th. On the 10th, we will have a uh, hooding ceremony at the Reverend Dr. Gina Marcia Stewart's church, Christ Missionary Baptist Church. She is the mentor for our cohort, and uh, we'll have a hooding there, and on that um, Saturday morning at 10 o'clock, we will join with the rest of our uh, seminarians that are graduating for services at another church. We will provide the link. I'm not expecting you all to come to Memphis, but we will we'll provide the link so you can watch it at home should you uh, so desire. I'm excited about what God's next is, even for a 68-year-old woman, because I'm reminded that when Moses had already given up 
over there tending sheep, feeling like all was lost, there came a theophany. That's a presence of God that's unexplained. And a bush was burning, but it was not being consumed. What you say? And a voice cried, said, Moses, take off your shoes. For the ground on which you now stand is holy ground. And Moses was commissioned to go back and finish what God had already decreed and declared would be so. Even at 80 years old. So, here I is. At 68, to do what thus saith the Lord. I tell you, and I'm grateful to a God who will keep you and not let you look like the mm you've been through. He'll keep you, he'll keep you, he'll keep you. Amen and amen. Thank you again. So this morning we are acknowledging our ushers, our greeters, and our security. In Psalms 84 and 10 it says, I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God then dwell in the tents of the wicked. Here at Greenleaf, ushers have a multiplicity of responsibilities, as do greeters and security people. They are the first face, as Deacon Gloria read, that people see when they come onto the parking lot, how you instruct them on how to go park their cars can determine whether or not they will come back again or whether or not they'll make a U-turn in the parking lot and leave. <laughs> it will determine what they will think of Greenleaf Christian Church. Have you ever encountered somebody and they messed you up so until what you went to enjoy, you couldn't even enjoy it? Because you were so mad and thinking about all the things that if you didn't know Jesus, what they would have got wouldn't have come out the Bible. But you were just mad. Your whole thoughts were on all of that. So what happens in that parking lot is it's not just parking cars. It's inviting people into this space that they may have an encounter with God. Amen. And when we do something to barricade that encounter, God holds us accountable. Yes. Yes, How someone greets them at the door when they come in and say, welcome to Greenlee Christian Church. We're so glad that you chose to come here this morning. Because guess what? They passed by some other churches before they got here. But if the Lord sent them here, the least we can do is be nice to them. Because the word does declare that you ought to be aware of how you entertain strangers. Because you just might be entertaining angels. You don't know. And then when you usher somebody to their seat, you don't know what you're ushering in. It could be somebody whose mind is set that today is going to be the last day if I don't get an answer. And if you nasty and ugly, they say, well, I was thinking the right thing. I just might as well end it because this is how, how people do. When we come to the house of the Lord, it ought to be a hospital for the sick. Yes. You shouldn't be tortured in a hospital. You should be healed in a hospital. You should be given bombs and salves to ease whatever your pains are in a hospital. So whatsoever we do, we do it heartily. Why? Because this is ministry. This is ministry. And you are operating in the ministry of helps. So thank you, our ushers. Some of you that are not on duty this morning, thank you. Our president for the usher ministry, or chairperson for the usher, usher ministry is Deacon Evelyn Paul. She's away from us on this morning because her mother uh, fell and fractured her hip and had surgery on yesterday, and so Sister Evelyn is there with her, rightfully so. Uh, greeters, chairperson is Deacon Gloria Howard, and security is Deacon Jerry Howard. If you feel God is calling you, you hear what I said? If you feel God is calling you, not just so you're trying to find something to do in a church. Mm -mm. God is calling you. Remember, leaders, our workshop on who's holding your ladder. You want to make sure the skilled people and the people that got the heart to do the work are the ones that are doing it. So if you feel that you are called to do any of these things, check with these chairpersons. We need more hands, more hearts, more spirits to do this work. But we want it to be, I'd rather have a few doing it right than a lot of folks doing it wrong. So let us do that. And remember, 
If you're not speaking in tongues, you're not laying on of hands, you're not teaching, it's still all right because the ministry of helps is also part of what yes. the Holy Spirit gives. Yes. Yes. And so walk in that. Amen? Amen. 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 Tithe and offering time. Hallelujah. There Amen. you go. That's right, brother. He said, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Tithe and offering time. I am so glad that God does not require us to do equal giving, but he does require equal sacrifice. We should always bring unto the Lord our best gift. Why? Because God gave us his best gift. And so here at Greenlee Christian Church, we can give four ways. This is the second Sunday. So on the second and the um, fourth Sunday. And Deacon John, you said that the week of the 22nd is a busy week. I don't know if everybody is invited to come over to that with the garden thing or not. Could you speak to that? Can y'all hear him? Everybody can hear him. I hope that the people were able to hear you online because, because they just might want to come and give them a plot of land and give me one or two cucumbers because I ain't no, I'm not no dirt digging girl. <laughs> I'm not no dirt digging girl. Amen. 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 This mic is not on. It's dead. I thought I'd be good. For what? One minute. Um, this is a Sunday that we do take up the offering for, thank you, for rebuilding broken places. We do that on second and fourth Sunday. The work that is done over there is amazing work and we Greenleaf are connected to that work. So we should sow into that work. Little becomes much when it's placed in the master's hands. First Christian Church on Ash Street, which is our sister church, has partnered with us. Uh, and we don't want other people to sow more into our garden than what we're willing to sow into it. This is Greenleaf's Community Development Corporation. It's what we are sowing back into the life of the community. And so please, please, uh, Brother Mark has something that he would like to say along the line of a plea for that. I want to encourage you as well as he is preparing to give his plea if you will please purchase tickets, come out to that fundraiser. If you can't come, sow a seed for somebody else to be able to attend, or just sow a seed. Give a donation for an ad, patrons list or something. I don't know if they have that or not, but give, give, give. It is fertile soil and is blessing a lot of people. And sometimes we don't realize the blessing in things until those things are no longer there. And as uh, Brother Mark is getting ready to add on to that, let me just say here at Greenleaf Christian Church, we can give four ways. Of course, you can give here present in sanctuary. You can give via PayPal or PushPay. Um, go to our church website 
and click on the donate button and donate there, or you can give through P.O. Box 597, Goldsboro, North Carolina, 27533. Give, give, give. The Lord will bless your giving. Okay, Brother Mark. I'm on the board of, um, you know, trustees over at uh, Rebuilding Broken Places, and uh, I want to recognize a couple of people first. Uh, Ms. Uh, Francine in the back, um, our deacon over here, Deacon Black, uh, chairperson, Larcine, and then our current CEO. Um, he took time out the other day, about 30 minutes with me, and uh, really explained, you know, where we are. Um, rebuilding needs us. They are not just across the street. Right. And I used to be like you sitting in, in the church and hearing, you know, Deacon Black and, you know, pastor and always talking about rebuilding broken places. And, yeah, I've been where you were and go, ah, oh, it's OK. It'll be OK. It's not going to be OK. That's ours. It belongs to us. OK. And right now, as a church, we're treating rebuilding broken places like a rental car. Now, you know, when you rent a car, you don't care about it. You run it in the ground. You take it back dirty, you take it back filthy because it doesn't belong to you. But everybody that has their own car, you take the time out to wash it, you vacuum it out, you're very particular about who gets in it, same as your house, same as all the other things over there. So I'm making a personal plea to you, the people and friends that you have, not just in here, we need sponsors. We need people to sponsor, not just our fundraiser, but the different things that we have over there. Everybody at Rebuilding Broken Places works really hard. And they turn a dollar into $10, and $10 into $100, and they make magic work all the time. But they shouldn't have to work that hard because it belongs to us. And if we don't take care of it, and other people are sewing into it, and they see that, it's not gonna be ours much longer. It's gonna belong to somebody else, and it's gonna be our fault. So the fundraiser is just one way that we do. And second and fourth Sunday is just another way. But we need to take care of our own. This is under us. This belongs to us. So take some time to go over there and talk to the people. Go across the street, just not to go over there and have something to eat for pastor's appreciation and fellowship and then leave. Go over there and see the people. See what they're doing and how they're impacting our community and what we have to do under the leadership of our pastor. This is our time. This is our season. This is what we need to do. Amen. Y'all pity pat that clap. <laughs> pity pat that clap. But not to just keep on riding on a, uh, I'm not gonna say a dead horse because a horse is pretty much, is very much alive but just to keep on riding this horse, you may think, well, I ain't got all that much to give, but if you'll give five or $10 every month consistently to it, if all of us are here would do that, think about how much that would be toward that. Recurring giving is what we need so that it is a stable amount there, okay? I'm, and my prayer is that God will touch our hearts so that we will be able to do it. Last thing before we begin to give. Most of you know who are members of Greenlee Christian Church that as Bishop Barber left, it was said that we, don't, we are a debt-free church, that we don't have uh, a mortgage in that. But you see that parking lot out there? <laughs> That's a bill that we're going to have to pay. If you've ever had anything constructed of your own, you know that you go into it thinking it's gonna be X, Y, and Z, and you got it sealed. You counted your little coins down to the pennies, and then they come and tell you, we found this right here, and that's gonna be some extra. This is our church, just like the rebuilding broken places is ours. We have to sow y'all ministry cost. And curb appeal is important. Amen. We want this parking lot to be finished. We want this one that we're currently on to be refurbished. We want to look around in our church. And because it's God's house, we want to take care of it. Please, please, so 
Let us pray. God, we thank you for an opportunity to sow into your kingdom. God, we realize that these material things are going to pass away, but while you have blessed us with them, we are responsible for upkeeping them. So, Lord, we pray that you would touch the hearts and the minds of your people, that they might be reminded that it is more blessed to give than it is to receive, that they might be reminded that you give seed to the sower, that they might be reminded that when we give in good measure, you will give back to us, oh God. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. We tried you for ourselves, God, and we know that when we are tithers and givers, some way, somehow, you make ways for us. Return unto us seed that we can yet sow again. So now, Lord, bless these seeds as they come. Sanctify them for the use and the upbuilding of your kingdom. Bless the rebuilding broken places. Bless Greenly Christian Church. Not that we can put what we have in our coffers and sit on it, but that we might find ways that we might serve your people, serve this world, and be a light in darkness. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
to help with this, but there have been some people who have been, had some difficulties uh, with giving their donations through PayPal. So um, perhaps Deacon John or somebody on the trustees can help them if they can, you know, if they're here today, if they can just speak to them. Some people are having issues being able to do their tithing and their giving on PayPal. So assist them with that if you can. Um, this morning, as um, it became unclear as whether or not I was going to be able to get back here in a timely manner, I reached out to Elder Bill and asked him if he would preach this morning. And so he's going to preach this morning. Yeah. It's a blessing to be able to have somebody you can call mm -hmm. and say, can you? And they say, yes, no problem, no problem. I got you, I got you. And so after the choir gives uh, the next selection of their choice, the next voice that we're going to hear by way of the word yeah. is our minister of music, Elder Ronzel Bell. Yeah. Lord, you are good. You've been so good. Lord, you are good. You've been better than good. I can't praise you enough. I owe you my life. Can't thank you enough. Even if I try cause you've been so good you've been so good you've been so good to me to me Lord, you've been good, been so kind. Sometimes I know that it blows my mind. You've been good, so good, so good to me. To me. So good, so good. So good. You've been my, my good. So good. Lord, you've been so good. Better to me than I've been to myself. So good to me. Lord, you are good. Lord, you are good. You've been better than good. I can. I owe you my life. I can't praise you enough. Even if I try, because you've been so good. You've been. So good, so good, so good to me. Lord, you are good. 
Lord, you are so good. You've been mighty good. You've been better than good to me, Lord. I owe you my life. I can't praise you enough. Even if I tried. Because you've been. So good, yes you have. You've been money, money good. So many doors you opened. So many ways you made. So many times you healed me. You've been better than good to me. So many doors you opened. So many ways you made. So many times you healed me. You've been better than good to me. So many doors you opened. You made a way out of no way. So many times you heal me, Lord. So many doors you open. So many ways you made. You've been better than good to me. So many ways you made. So many times you heal me. So many doors, so many ways, over and over again. So many doors you open, you made a way out of no way. You've been so good. You've been. So good, you've been so good to me, to me. for his goodness thank him for his mercy thank him for his grace Lord we come this morning to stand in this holy place thank you for all you've done use Lord these lips of clay I realize this morning I'm nothing without you Father, as you have been with me in preparation, stand now with me in proclamation. I give you glory. I give you honor. And I give you praise. In Jesus' name, amen. If there's one thing I can say this morning is that God has been 
so good to me. When I look back over my life and I think things over, I can truly say that I've been blessed. Hallelujah. Glory. Glory. When I think about where God has brought me from, and when I think about where God is taking me to, I'm compelled this morning to praise and worship Him. It's all right to bless Him. Just like Pastor said earlier, don't judge my praise until you know my story. And you don't know what it took for me to get to this place. Glory to God. Glory to God. Those of you who, who know me, first before I even say that, I just want to say we celebrate this morning our own, the Reverend Doctor. The Reverend Doctor. <laughs> Reverend Doctor. And I thank God that I I thank God that when she started that journey, she was like, Elder Bell, should I do this? I was like, Yeah, you should. And she's like, No, no. I was like, Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> but now we're here and we bless God for Pastor Reverend Doctor Gladwin yes. Cheryl Hennett Azell. Amen. Celebrate it one more time, everybody. Okay. Now that I've got that out of the way, um, those of you who know me know that I don't want to make you glad twice. Glad I stood up and glad I sat down. So let's get to the word. I'm going to be coming this morning from the book of 1 Samuel chapter 30. Verses 1 through 8. That's 1 Samuel chapter 30, 1 through 8. I'm reading from the King James Version this morning. And I believe it's on, your scre on the screen. Yeah. It is on the screen this morning. First eight verses. And it came to pass when David and his men were come to Ziglag on the third day that the Amalekites had invaded the south and Ziglag and smitten Ziglag and burned it with fire and had taken the women captive that were therein. They slew not any, either great or small, but carried them away and went on their way. So David and his men came to the city, and behold, it was burned with fire. And their wives and their sons and their daughters were taken captives. And David and the people that were with him lifted up their voice and wept until they had no more power to weep. And David's two wives were taken captives. Ahinoam, the Jezreelites, and Abigail, the wife of Nabal, the Carmelite. And David was greatly distressed. For the people spake of stoning him because the souls of all the people was grieved. Every man for his sons and for his daughters. But David encouraged himself in the Lord his God and said and David said to Abathar the priest uh, uh, excuse me Ahimelech's son I pray thee bring me hither the 
Alfred, Epod, and Abathar brought thither the Epod to David. And David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue after this troop? Shall I overtake them? And he answered him, Pursue, for thou shalt surely overtake them, and without fail, recover all. I like to speak this morning from the three words, pursue, overtake, and recover all. Pursue, overtake, and recover all. I like to start this message off with a disclaimer. And my disclaimer this morning is, this message is not for everyone. This message is not for you if everything in your life is going well all of the time. This is not for you if you have achieved all of the set accomplishments in your life. This message is not for those who have made it and you're doing well in every aspect of your life. But this message is for those of us who find ourselves constantly in the battles and throes of life. The sermon this morning is for those of us who have lost many things in our lifetime. This message is for those of us who made plans for success. And just as we started to implement our plans, puff, and the whole thing fell apart. This message is for those of us who start out but failed along the way because of a setback or because of fear. This message is for me. This message is for you. And this message is for us. I'm talking to you this morning. If you ever felt discouraged and seemed like nothing was going to work in your favor. I came to encourage you that if you ever felt like giving up and throwing in the tower, I came this morning to talk to those who were tempted to throw in the tower and wave the white flag and quit. Please know and hear me well that this is not the time to quit. Y'all help me preach this morning. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, this is not the time to quit. This is not the time to throw in the tower. I admonish you to put away the white flag and don't give up yet. It's too soon to quit. Quitting is not an option. I dare you to dig in your heels this morning and come into agreement with the word of God. I double dare you to roll up your sleeves and fight back. Tell yourself, I've come too far to give up now. I came to tell somebody, you will recover. And God will restore all that the enemy has taken from you. I just want to let you know this morning that no matter how bad your situation may seem, glory to God, you have nothing to fear because your victory is guaranteed. I said your victory is guaranteed. I am convinced that what you're going through right now is setting the stage for your next level. <laughs> Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. I said that what you're going through right now is just setting the stage for your next level. You may not know how or when your situation is going to work out, but I want you to know that it's guaranteed to come out victory. I don't care what it looks like right now, but it's coming out victory. You might be hurting right now, but it's coming out victorious. Let me remind somebody, the same God that brought you through this and the same God that brought you th through that has not lost any of his power. The same God that brought you through that trial last year can bring you through the trial that you're going through right now. The same God that brought you through this and that can bring you through this and that again. Can I get a witness? Somebody ought to lift your hands and praise God for what he's already brought you through. 
Now that you praise him for all that he's brought you through, I want you to praise him in advance for what he's getting ready to do for you right now. Come on and praise him. Okay, okay. In this scripture that I read in your hearing this morning, David and his mighty army had gone to fight a battle. The Malachites, the enemies, came and raided their city. Ziglag, Ziklag, burned it down to ashes. The enemy took the women and the sons and daughters captive. Notice they did not kill them, but carried them away and went their way. The Malachites did, did not come in to raid and plunder and steal when David and his men were, were at home. But they caused this ruckus when the strong men had gone to war. Caused this ruckus when they were off their posts. Now ain't that just like the devil to do a sneak attack on you? Try to catch you off guard. Jesus warns us profoundly in two statements in the New Testament. First, he lets us know, Jesus lets us know that the plan of the enemy is to steal, kill, and to destroy. So Jesus exposes the plan of the enemy, but he tells us to be of good cheer because he says, I am come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. Secondly, Jesus teaches us that no man can enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods except first he binds the strong man. So I want you to know that the devil is looking for ways to trip you up and catch you off God. But how many of y'all know that our strength is in the word of God? I said our strength is in God's word. Don't let the devil catch you off God. It's, it's, it's important that you stay rooted and grounded in God's word. Now let me get back to the, peri the pericope as pastor taught me. Let's get back to the story. So when David and his men came back to the city, Ziklag, it was burned down and their wives and children were taken into captivity. And just as anyone would do who loves their family, David and his men were upset. And the Bible says that they lifted their voices and began to weep and began to cry. The Bible says they wept until they had no more strength to cry. No more power to weep. In great distress and agony, the men who were with David began to talk about killing him. Stoning him because to them, David was the cause of this situation. He was their leader and he led them to war. And because they were not there, they felt like we lost everything. Everything they had, everything that they had worked for was gone burned to ashes. I wonder how some of us would have behaved if we came home and found all of our stuff in shambles and, and in a mess. Even their families were uh, 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 not as they left them so they felt like somebody ought to take the blame for this. So they were talking about killing David, stoning him. This is much like us, so typical of who we are. Whenever we get in a, uh, 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 we face an issue or a situation, we're too quick to point fingers at the other person and try to blame somebody. We we feel like somebody ought to take the take the blame rather than trying to sit down and calm ourselves and try to find what what is God's solution to this situation. That that's that, that's church folks for you. If you don't believe me, let something go left that should have gone right. They feel like somebody ought to take the blame. But before you cast the blame on somebody else, before you start throwing stones, I want you to look at what did you do to make the situation better. But the Bible tells us David strengthened himself. I like this. David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. David could have made a lot of choices at this point, but he, he could have chose to look at the situation and look at the circumstances and have himself a pity party. He could have got angry because the people were talking about him. 
and he could have retaliated that his own men would turn it against him but the first thing that David did was to break this spirit of discouragement over his life the Bible teaches us that David encouraged himself in the Lord one of the first things we got to learn how to do is sometimes you have to encourage yourself you better stop waiting on other people to encourage you stop waiting on people to validate you I came to tell you this morning that you have the power in your own mouth to speak to your own situation there are times in our lives when we have to speak victory even in the middle of of bad circumstances there are times in our lives when we got to talk to ourselves and we have to tell ourselves that we can make it no matter what the situation looks like. Sometimes you have to encourage your own self. Glory be to God. Even when your situation looks bleak and dim, when it seems like our situations are not going to work out, we ought to remind ourselves of, of this one thing, of, uh, 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 that God did it in the past and God is able to do it again. Sometimes you just got to remind yourself of what God has already done. And then you'll know that if he did it back then, he can do it right now. Hold it, baby. I'm coming. I'm coming. I ain't ready. I ain't quite ready yet. You got to know that God is able. I want to submit to you this morning if all you do in the face of difficulty is sit down and cry and have a pity party, ain't nothing going to change for you. I, I, I think I want to say that again. If all you do in the face of difficult situations is sit down and cry and have a pity party, ain't nothing going to change for you. I mean, it's all right to cry. Sometimes you have to cry. But, but, but I want you to keep, keep in mind that after the tears, you got to get up, dust yourself off, and do something about your situation. So after David encourages himself in the Lord, he instructs Abathar, Ahimelech's son, to bring him the ephod. And now the ephod was a priestly garment. I, I want y'all to catch this. The ephod was a priestly garment. It was an apron that was worn when the priest went into worship. I want y'all to get this now. Even though David was hurting and in distress, David put on the garment of praise. I said, even when he was hurting, he put on this garment of praise. I want to suggest to you this morning that God wants to make an exchange with you. He wants to give you the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. I'm talking about when things look dim and when you're going through situations, God wants to make a change with you. He wants to make an exchange with you this morning. He wants to give you the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. While you're going through your situation and your circumstances seem uncertain, learn how to worship God. Learn how to praise him in the midst of what you're going through. Learn how to give God glory. And I guarantee you, your situation will shift. Another thing that the Bible teaches us is that David began to pray and talk to God. I don't care how bad it looks, church. You can always pray. The old saints used to say, well, I said the old saints, but now I'm one of the old saints. They used to say, I know prayer changes things. And I can testify this morning that I know prayer changes things. I know what prayer can do because I've been in some situations where all I could do was pray my way out. I know prayer changes things and I know prayer changes people too. So David inquired at the Lord. He began to pray and began to ask God, shall I pursue after this truth? Shall I overtake them? Notice here that David asked the Lord some questions. Shall I pursue and shall I overtake? He did not step out without instructions. He did not move without hearing from God first. David asked God for his divine guidance. Many times we move before we get instructions from God. And when we move before we get instructions, we put ourselves into some dangerous situations. My Lord and your God, 
when we move out of God's divine guidance, we make our situations worse instead of better. So I want to admonish you this morning is to just stand still when you don't know what to do. Just stand still and wait on the Lord. David said, wait on the Lord and be of good courage. And the Lord will strengthen your heart. So I want to admonish somebody this morning, if you don't know where to move, if you don't know how to move, stand still until the Lord's will is clear. Amen. Well, just in case you missed it, I want to point out these points to you again. First, you got to learn how to encourage yourself. Yeah. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, no more pity parties. Learn how to encourage yourself. Secondly, you got to learn how to put on the garment of praise. You got to praise your way through your situation. I'm on my way to my seat. I don't know what y'all waiting for. Thirdly, you got to pray and seek God for his guidance. Don't move until you hear from God. And lastly, when God tells you what to do, you obey. Without question, obey. And see, there's our problem. When God says do this, we want to have a bunch of questions. No questions asked. When God says move, you move. If God says stand still, stand still. If God says go forth, go forth. Trust him and obey. Okay, so and the Lord answered David. And when the Lord answered David, he gave a direct answer. Listen to this. The Lord says, David, pursue. For thou shalt surely overtake them. And the Lord says, David, without fail, recover all. God's answer to David is as relevant to us today as it was when David his, and his men were in crisis. Pursue, overtake, and recover all. Now, I don't know who I'm preaching to this morning. I have no idea really who this word is for. But I stopped by Greenleaf this morning to, to, to tell somebody that it's your time to pursue. It's your time to overtake. And it's your time to recover all. Pursue means to chase after something. Or to chase after someone. Overtake means to get ahead of them and, and, and suddenly come upon someone. To recover means to take back everything that was taken from you. I come to tell some child of God this morning, you may have suffered from some setbacks and like David found yourself in some unfamiliar territory with no help in sight. You may have suffered some losses in your life, uh, but I came to tell you this morning that it's not what it looks like. Um, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, it's not what it looks like. Um, you might be at the point of discouragement uh, and seems like nothing is about to break, um, but I got good news for you this morning. Uh, it's your time. Um, point to yourself and say, it's my time. Um, it's your time. Uh, it's your winning season. <laughs> Tell somebody it's your winning season. <laughs> it's your time <laughs> to pursue and overtake uh, and recover all. <laughs> it's time to go back and take what rightfully belongs to you. <laughs> Listen church, if the devil has taken your peace of mind, <laughs> I want you to go and take it back. Um, if the devil has shaken your faith uh, I want you to go and take it back uh, if the devil has taken your joy I'm getting ready to sit down uh, now go and take it back uh, if the devil has messed up your home life uh, messed with your wife and children uh, messed with your husband uh, I want you to go and take it back uh, if the devil messed up your marriage uh, go and take it back that's if you want it uh, go and take it back uh, if the devil messed up your relationship, uh, go and take it back. Uh, tell the devil that don't belong to you. Uh, that's mine. Uh, tell him it's mine. Uh, I caught the devil stealing. Uh, I told him you a liar. Uh, go take it back. Uh, that ain't yours. Uh, that's mine. Uh, 
tell somebody this morning, uh, I'm going to the devil's camp. Uh, and I'm going to take back everything uh, that the devil stole from me. Uh, tell somebody, it's my time. Uh, it's my recovery time. Uh, no matter what you're going through, uh, it's your time. Uh, no matter what it looks like, uh, it's your time. Uh, it's your winning season. Uh, it's your winning season. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's your winning season. Uh, I had enough uh, of the devil's mess. Uh, it's my winning season. Uh, it's my winning season. Uh, yes, Lord. Uh, somebody say yes, Lord. I don't care what you're going through. Tell somebody it's recovery time. I don't care how bad your day seems. How sleepless your nights are. It's recovery, to recovery time. I don't care how sticky your situation may be. It's recovery time. You got to pursue. Overtake and recover all. Go get what rightfully belongs to you. God gave it to you. It's yours. It's yours. It's my winning season. It's my winning season. No more am I going to take a back seat. No more am I going to let the devil trouble me. It's my winning season. It's my winning season. It's my recovery time. Say yeah. Say yeah. Say yeah. Say yeah. Hallelujah. I feel this thing. I feel this thing way down on the inside. It's my winning season. I had enough. I've taken enough of the devil's junk. I've taken enough of the devil's mess. But thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. I wish I had some worshiping saints. Thanks be to God who gives me the victory. Tell somebody I got the victory. I know it don't look like it, but I got the victory. Victory is mine. Victory is mine. It's mine. It's mine. It's mine. It's mine. It's mine. It's my victory. God gave it to me. Jesus gave it to me at Calvary. Hallelujah. 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 Thank God for the victory. Tell your neighbor, victory is mine. Sister Rochelle, victory is mine. This is my victory. It's my winning season. And I won't take it back. Sister Lausine, it's my winning season. It's my winning season. Church, it's my recovery season. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Now, now, as you begin to lift your hands and praise God for all the things God has brought you through, go on and praise him for what he's already done. Lift those hands and give God glory for what he's already done. He's brought you through this, brought you through that, healed your body when you were sick. Hallelujah, provided for you when provisions needed to be made. Somebody say, he's been food on my table, water when I was thirsty. He's been my friend when I was lonely. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's been all that, but he's been so much more. So thank you for what he's already done. Now I want you to begin to look into your future. I want you to look into your future right now. And I want you to begin to praise God for that thing that he's working out for you. As you got your hands lifted in the air, I want you to begin to praise God for working that thing out. It's your winning season. <laughs> it's your winning season. Hallelujah. So if there's one today, if there's one today that want to give your heart to Jesus, because God has brought you through so much, He's been so good. He's been better than good. You owe him everything. You owe him for what he's already brought you through.
when you look back over your life and you see what God has brought you through better than that you see what God is taking you to then you owe God a praise you owe him your life you owe him your life so if there's one you're tired of taking the devil's mess and you've made up in your mind I'm not going to take it anymore I'm going to come and give it to Jesus you can come right now and give it to him if there's somebody in the building that's seeking a church home Greenleaf, the doors are open. The doors are open this morning. Hallelujah. And Jesus is waiting for you. He's waiting for you. I surrender all. All to Jesus. I surrender. Is there anybody ready to give it up this morning? Anybody get ready to give it up and and to let it go? Anybody? I will ever. I want to give it to Jesus this morning. I surrender. I surrender. You got to get tired of being sick and tired. You got to get tired. I surrender. Jesus is waiting for you. Oh, to thee. My blessed. seated we want to give just a moment for or give some time for praying space for praying space you know it's amazing how when it's us we got time and we want everybody else to take time when we're struggling or we're going through some things that we just want prayer. Bless God. It's good to see Sister Pat in service this morning. Yeah. Amen. Amen. God brought her through. God brought her through. And she's back in service on this morning. Good to see Sister Molly sitting back uh, in the overflow. We're lifting her during her time of bereavement. Sister Jackie went back to work on this week. God saw her through her surgery. Amen. And so we want to just give a moment. Uh, if you want to come to the altar, if you want to be anointed, if you want to be prayed for, pray with, we want to just, just take that moment. Just take that moment. Be patient because you don't ever know when it's going to be you Amen. that's going to need somebody to come and pray for you or take a moment or so with you. I surrender, surrender all. I
hearts are in the row. Oh, to thee, yes, oh, to thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender. I love you. I love you. Love you, Lord, today. Cause you cared for me in such a special way.
my heart is filled. With praise, that's why my heart is I was asked to remind you all that there will be tickets on sale in the back for the banquet. Please, please make sure that you just go by there. If you don't have it today, tell them to put your name on the list and pay before the time. Amen. 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 The Lord has met us here in this place on today. Yes, we son. thank God for the servant of God that brought forth the word. And we are standing on the word of God. If you don't know, don't speculate. But as I look over this church, I see a many, a many, a many, a many, a many of a miracles. Yes. Things that God has done. That's a testimony to us that if he did it for them, he can do it for us. Amen. And so we stand on what we have seen God do. Some of your stories, I ain't going to tell it because I ain't got permission to tell it. Ain't my testimony. So I won't put your name with it, but I've seen God take folks through kidney transplants. Yeah. I've seen God heal from strokes. Yeah. I've seen God take folks through cancer, yeah. through chemo. Hey, ma na 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 bosa. Yeah, 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 brain tumors. And if God did all of that in this house, whatever our sister or brother thing is that they got, I'm not gonna call it a little thing, because when it's happening to you, it's a big thing. But whatever your thing is that's going on, look at the testimonies around you and say, God, you faithful. If you took care of them, I know you got me. Amen. Amen. Let's get ready to go home. Love on somebody on your way out. Amen. Let us stand. Thank you, Elder Bell, for the word. Get your mic and give the words of benediction as you walk this way to greet the people, and they will close with threefold amen. 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 With them, lift your hands. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you. The Lord be gracious unto you. And may the Lord give you peace now and forever. And all God's people said, Amen. Saints, our saints.